Good morning and afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Fast Track Friday Hangout. Um, I'm Wayne Griffenberg with Autodesk. I'm a CAD CAM applications engineer. Uh, today we have what's new in Fusion 360. We had a major update this summer, in fact, just this week. And uh, today we have Ka-Ching Song and Jake Fowler with us today to go over what some of those changes are that affect us as, as a CAM community as well as across the board in Fusion. So Ka-Ching and Jake, thanks for hanging with us today. Yeah, yeah, it's great right. to be here. Awesome, guys. Thanks, Matt. I, I, we really appreciate you guys coming out to uh, show us what's going on in Fusion. So uh, before we go into that, I'd like to do a couple questions of our audience. I want to ask you guys a few poll questions just to talk about where we're at as far as our development is concerned and also where we can build content that can help you. Each week we do these webinars. We do them Wednesday and we do them on Friday really to try to get more information and training to you guys uh, to be able to, to flourish and grow with our software. And one thing that's going to help you grow in your business, uh, that's what we'd like to know, is ways that you can grow your business um, by looking and, at the different interfaces. Actually, this is one poll question. I'm sorry, let me close that out. I grabbed the wrong one, guys. Sorry about that. What I'd like to do is I want to ask you guys, what is most likely to drive your growth? This is the question I wanted to ask. So as you're growing with us as CAD, CAD, CAD CAM members in Autodesk community, where is it that we can focus our, uh, our content that we do every week in these webinars, as well as our development? So we have our developers and our elite users feeding back into this process to know where should we focus? Where does it make most sense for our development in the CAM side of Fusion as well as HSM to know where it's going to help you guys drive your growth? So if you're looking at uh, three, two to three axis milling and that's your primary uh, future to grow, or if you're looking at true four or five axis, maybe even mill turn, uh, if these are the places where we can focus our time and focus content, we will actually we will do that in the future. So your feedback is really going to be helpful for us. So I appreciate your taking the time to take this poll question to get that information back to our teams. Cool. Looks like the majority has voted. I really do appreciate that. So I'm going to close out the polls. I'm going to share that with the team. So it looks like we have a good split. Look at that. 27% across the board looking into growing, turning, and mill turn. Uh, your your uh, positional, your indexing, four and five axis milling, as well as true four and five axis. So that's good. We know that the, the majority of, of the audience that we have here uh, and uh, looking into where they can grow their business, a lot of them are uh, already working with some two and three axis milling as well as some water jet laser and plasma. So thanks, guys. I really appreciate that. It helps us to know to focus our content as well as our development. Um, also, I have another poll question. Uh, you guys who have been, been with us uh, know we're going to ask this question, but a lot of you have been to Autodesk University. Um, some of you may have not. We just want to get a good idea uh, within our audience who, who's been joining us every year. Um, and as we go forward, keep in mind, we're getting very CAM focused. We're, a lot of Autodesk University classes are based on uh, our CAM knowledge transfer. We have a lot of those elite users, our power users and developers are going to be teaching classes this year. Lawrence will be there. I believe Neil. And uh, when we have... Um, uh, Al and, and even Renee, our developer, is going to be teaching classes at Autodesk University this year. So it's really going to be a great uh, event, uh, as well as uh, seminars and keynote speakers uh, and really uh, hands-on classes to be able to, to design your part, develop it. Uh, I think we even have classes to make your own speaker for an iPhone. So it's going to be pretty awesome. Okay, guys, I appreciate your voting. It looks like we have most of the votes in. Thanks, guys. I'm going to close this out and share it with you guys. Okay, it looks like 36% uh, like would like to know how to get there. So if you go into our um, Autodesk websites, you could take a look at some of the contests that are going on. I know that there's a few contests in the past where we had a fusion contest with uh, Kurt Chan. I think we have a few more contests going on. I'll have to double check with him to make sure that, uh, you know, where we are with those contests. But one of the 
one of the giveaways was seats at Autodesk University. But keep your eyes open, keep, your, uh, keep looking in Instagram as well as our main websites and our forums to see different ways to get there. And of course, you can always sign up through the Autodesk University website as well. Cool. So again, we really appreciate your guys taking the time to vote uh, and giving us that feedback that's going to help us grow as well as help you grow in your business. So with that, I'm going to hand this over to Kaching and Jake to give you guys an idea of what has been updated this week and some major stuff coming out. Uh, and, I, and I'm excited to hear what the, these guys are going to talk to us about. So Kaching and Jake, I'm going to hand it over to you. And, All right. Uh, Sounds good. Awesome. Let me, uh, let me do this real quick. Uh, to, again, out there, guys, sorry, uh, Kaching, but if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask those questions in the questions panel of the GoToWebinar, and we're going to be here to help answer those questions. And uh, while we have, we're working live, you can always ask Kaching and Jake, and we'll get those questions uh, to them. All right, Kaching, are you uh, having? A, are you able to, to share your screen with us? Oh, I hope we didn't lose you there. That looks like he's signing back in as a presenter now. I don't know if we're not able to hey. hear you. There you go. There we go. Hey, guys. Sorry about that. I was just about to take control, and the Go webinar crashed on me. Ah, I'm that back. happens. That happens. Technical difficulties do happen. Awesome. Yes. Glad you're back. All right. Um, so, yeah. Wayne, if you can give me control, uh, let's try this one more time. You got it. Let me bring this over to there. Sorry out there, guys. Sometimes we have some uh, – there we go. I can see your screen now. It's looking good. Wonder. All right. All right. While this – while the – yeah, while the presentation loads, here we go. All right, guys. Um, uh, really excited to be here. I uh, just want to give everyone a quick introduction here. Um, I'm Kaching Song. I'm one of the product managers on the Fusion 360 team, and uh, I've, uh, we're here based in Portland, Oregon. Um, and I'm also here with Jake Fowler. Jake, you want to do a quick introduction? Sure. So I'm Jake Fowler. I'm a user experience designer for Fusion 360. I mostly focus on the sketch and modeling tools. Um, I'm actually based in the Shanghai office. Uh, we have an office in Shanghai, China. Um, I work pretty closely with the, the dev teams, the global dev teams, that work on adding new functionality. Um, but I'm in Portland this week. Normally I could make a webinar like this, but uh, luckily I'm in Portland, so this nicely coincides with my trip. So yeah, I'm gonna later on. I'm gonna introduce some of the sketch and modeling enhancements to that in this update. Sweet. Yeah. So get the really bit cool to have a guest guest special guest speaker Jake Fowler here on the on the webinar with you guys. Um, yeah, so like Wayne said, uh, we just had a, a update with some really major, major new functionality, some really cool stuff, and we're just going to jump right into it and give you guys an overview of what came out. Um, so yeah, let's let's dive right in. Um, you see on this slide, I think one of the three big things that we released is our Sheet Metal Browser Client Preview and ECAD MCAD Preview, um, along with a, a, a a ton of other things that also are really, uh, really important and really cool to, to have now in Fusion 360. And uh, I'll go through um, some of these one by one. So without further ado, let's just go right into Sheet Metal. And as we all know, now it's publicly available. Um, I, like, <laughs> I like showing this slide because Sheet Metal has been one of the top voted idea station requests actually the top voted idea station request and it was actually posted way back in 2013 um, so we're really excited that this is now available to everyone um, we've been hearing a lot of great feedback and uh, yeah if you I think this will this will definitely make a lot of people happy it'll improve your workflows you can finally make sheet metal parts and uh, yeah let's go let's look at a little bit more 
uh, what you can do in the sheet metal workspace. So essentially this is another workspace. You can access it through the workspace switcher. And when you do, uh, there's a number of tools that will show up in the toolbar. One of the main tools you'll be using is the flange tool. And um, what we did here is become, we, we have one flange tool that is uh, able to create a number of different flanges and flange types. So here what you see is base and edge flange, essentially taking uh, a face, actually more of a sketch. Uh, if you have a sketch profile, you can click on the profile itself to make a flange, and then you can click on the different, all the different edges to make the, the, the edge flanges. And you can see here all uh, the bend radiuses are, are automatically um, produced. You can also go in and change those bends, save the bends, uh, bend rules into an, in library for later use. And um, much like all the other fusion controls, and you can use arrows to drag them down. You can set a height. You can set angle. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's a quick run through base and edge flange. So also in the flange tool, you can do contour flanges. And what that means is uh, you, you can also use sketch lines or sketch entities. And if, even if they're not touching the actual uh, body or the, the flange, it, you can use this tool to make it, uh, make it connect, really, uh, and make a contour flange. So if you look at, if you, yeah, the, this GIF is kind of repeating itself, but if you see I'm drawing a couple lines here, and then using the flange tool, I select one edge, and I select the, the sketch there, and it connects, and you get that contour flange. And with also flanges, you're going to need to use miters. And uh, in the flange tool, you can also do that. Um, there's a miter option in the flange tool. You can check or uncheck it. Uh, if you uncheck it, then you'll see, you saw there that there won't be a miter. If you check it, there will be. You can also set the miter gap um, distance. So if it's not, if the default isn't the one that you need, you can override it and give it a specific distance. Um, and, uh, and yeah, great tool here. So with, with sheet metal, you're going to want uh, to, to set and save your own bend rules. So here, we're allowing you to edit the rule, create new rules, um, copy to a library that you can use for later, um, and you can also then uh, override certain bend rules if some of these, some of these bends are unique and uh, are not kind of a set of your standard rules. Um, you can also change the bend relief. Uh, that includes you know, shape, width, depth, um, and then also you, there's options to override two-bend corner or three-bend corner. Another really cool functionality here in Sheet Metal is the ability to unfold and refold. Um, and so what this is showing is you're taking a sketch and then you're making a flange and then there is a unfold tool that that makes the the flange flat and this allows you to use that flat uh, view and and design additional features on that part so once you've got that the features all sketched out and designed this is showing basically an extrude cut um, you can then refold it to see how it looks like uh, unfolded sorry I said <laughs> I said refold you can unfold it to see what it looks like when the part is actually unfolded. Um, so it just gives you more flexibility in, in designing features in a sheet metal part. Um, think of like slots and different cutouts on a, on a sheet, uh, depending on what part you're making. Uh, but uh, yeah, another nice flexible feature here. And it's, it's good to differentiate this from flat patterning. Um, where unfold and refold is really for you to design features, flat pattern is used to uh, essentially to document and manufacture. Um, this is where you can uh, edit your K factors, edit um, various features for manufacturing. And this is flat patterning. Flat patterns is what you're going to use for documentation and uh, cutting it out in the cam workspace. 
So here you see the bend, bend lines, and those bend lines will also carry over to the 2D drawings uh, environment. And uh, along with the sheet metal workspace, our, our teams have been working close together to make sure that 2D drawings also support bend tables and bend IDs, so uh, identifiers. And bend tables are created just like a normal table. It's in the table tool. As soon as you uh, open the flat pattern in the 2D drawing workspace, the 2D drawing workspace will essentially detect that and know that this is a flat pattern. And when you create a table, it's going to give you a bend table with, uh, with all the bends, with all the bend angles. And as you see here in the GIF, you can dock it you know, just like any other table. You can dock it to the, to the top. You can dock it to the right. Um, you can resize it. Um, so, uh, yeah, depend, giving you flexibility depending on where you want your tables. And this is showing uh, bend identifiers, which is a which is yeah new new feature here too. This is just supporting identifiers uh, with leaders uh, in in two D drawings. And then also you can take your flat pattern into CAM and start cutting it out with two uh, D profiling tools. Um, so this I think really rounds out the this um, the workflow of you know, designing sheet metal. Um, using Sketch, using the sheet metal tools, bringing it into 2D drawings, bringing it into CAM, and then as you all know in Fusion 360, if you make changes to the sheet metal or make changes to design, you know, things update very quickly and, um, and it's, it will save, I think this will save a lot of people a lot of time, um, and yeah, just a nicely rounded workflow here. So with that, it, we're uh, also kicking off a sheet metal challenge. Um, and uh, this, this is essentially uh, a cool way and, uh, and our way of kind of celebrating the, the sheet metal release. Um, and we want to give something back to you guys as well. Um, what this is saying, what this is showing is one of our, one of our team members' truck uh, needs a new bumper. And the, what you see in the top right corner there uh, is the truck without the bumper, and then uh, we've we partnered up with Faro, got the the front end of the truck scanned, and uh, we're throwing this challenge and and asking a, a you guys to design a sheet metal bumper um, for his truck, and so the cool part is the winner uh, of this challenge will have the bumper um, will will fly the. We'll fly you to San Francisco and have this bumper made, so you can you can actually make it with us. Um, have it made, and that's not all. We'll also um, throw in a, a free pass to Autodesk University, like Wayne Wayne mentioned earlier. So, guys, um, there, those of you who are voting uh, and looking at different ways to get there, here's a great opportunity uh, to yeah, to okay. enter the challenge and work with Sheet Metal, and you can get yourself a pass to go to AU and work with those elite guys. So, awesome, Kaching, awesome. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, so that's first prize. Second prize is also a pass to AU. Um, we're not, I don't, we're not going to fly you to, to SF. And the third, pla third place is uh, Fusion 360 swag package. So there's, there's three, three winners with three different prizes. Um, and uh, yeah, really, really looking forward to you guys uh, with what you guys are coming up with. There are some folks that are already sharing their designs. So. Uh, if you want more info, um, check out the What's New post on the blog. There's uh, links to the, the contest page, challenge page, um, and there's more information there. So, yeah. Okay, with that, let's, uh, let's transition, talk a little bit about ECAD, MCAD. And uh, this is something that we've been talking about for quite some time, and we're really excited that this is now in public preview. Um, if you're not really familiar with this workflow, essentially what this is uh, about is um, the ability to uh, better and more efficiently create uh, circuit boards and components within Fusion 360. Uh, what we've done is we've, uh, we've developed a tight integration with Eagle. Um, and Eagle is essentially a piece of software that you can uh, design circuit layouts, components, and it has a whole circuit library of, of parts 
And what we've done here is uh, create a nice handshake between Fusion 360 and Eagle. Um, so what does that mean? That means that uh, here I'm going to go. I'm going to actually just go right into the video here. Uh, yep. So this is just showing some Eagle Eagle the uh, Eagle UI of like where the components are in the software. How does the designing work? Uh, designing look like in the Eagle uh, environment. Um, well, so what what this really means is that in Fusion 360, you have a uh, you have to go to the preferences to turn on the this preview. But once you have turned on, notice in the under under the create drop down, there's a create PCB tool. So with that, you can use a sketch and then uh, click on the profile and right away create a profile board. So this is going essentially going to be your layout board, the, the, the base of your layout, the, the, the PCB board. And so from there, uh, let me just uh, go to the next slide and show this quick video here. And this was the speaker that Wing, Wing mentioned earlier. This is, in, uh, this is gonna be at Autodesk University and, and the, one of the classes is gonna actually uh, teach you how to make this. And we're actually gonna make this uh, in real life. Uh, so let me play that real quick. So this is showing, this is showing Eagle laying out some componentry. This is a final render of the, the speaker here. So we're doing a section view here, and we're going to take that base and create a board. We want the board to be right there. Uh, so create PCB, click on that, that base, and bloop, click that, select, select an origin point, and now we have a board. Um, the board comes in as a component, and then over in Eagle, uh, there's a little pull from Fusion um, button where it pulls that board right into Eagle. And then now you can start placing your, your components, uh, and then from there, you can push that back into Fusion 360. And what this will do is pull those components as 3D models into Fusion, so you don't have to go and model these from scratch, which is a huge time saver, right? Um, then from there, if you're making changes to the model, and you see how here we're showing that there's an interference, one of the walls is, is actually like in one of the components. So we're going to make a, a quick adjustment to the board. We're going to make a move one of the components so that it's not touching. This is showing it working in Fusion Team, so you can mark up certain changes. And we're going to pull it again and update uh, it in Eagle. And then Eagle will automatically re, you know, kind of lay out all the all the circuitry again. And it just it just makes this design process so much uh, more streamlined. Uh, and then this is just showing like you then from there you can go through that whole design process you can render you can document it you can then cut it out uh, and it's it just completes completes the the process even even further um, so this is currently in preview uh, if you're not familiar with Eagle check out the the Eagle um, software you just go to the Autodesk Eagle uh, search it on Google and you'll find it um, and if you're familiar with it, yeah, let us know how this previews work, preview works. We're really looking for feedback here, and uh, we really want to make this, make this right. So, yeah, really looking for your feedback. And this is uh, a lot of new functionality within Fusion and Eagle uh, that you guys can experience at AU this year. So, again, highly recommend joining us there to, to get uh, hands-on experience of how these processes work. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, number three, one of the, the other third big things that we, we released as preview here is browser client. Um, browser client, what does this mean? This means that in, in your browser, uh, in preferably in Chrome <laughs> uh, right now, you can sign into Fusion Team and, uh, and create a new design and uh, edit it, or create a new design and start designing straight in the browser, or you can edit it, edit an existing design in the browser. So in Fusion Team, you can see that there's an access point to create design or edit design in browser, and it looks it looks very similar to Fusion on desktop. Um, there there's still um, missing pieces. Uh, we are very aware of a uh, very aware of, of the limitations here. Our first goal here is to make sure that sketch and modeling are um, solid and performance is uh, is pretty crucial for us right now. Uh, making sure that it works fine, making sure that's stable. Um, so 
uh, give it a shot. You know, uh, open one of your designs, see how it works in the browser, um, make some you know edits to an existing design, make a new design. Um, let us know how this works. But uh, again, really, really excited that this is now available in public preview. Uh, something to call out on the on the Ooh. web the browser client is that in the top right corner there's a little button it's like a feedback button oh yes um, yes we're watching that right. super closely so if you have any suggestions or you know if you want to tell us about your experience with that we're really keen to, to get some feedback and we listen to everything that, that comes in yeah we yeah. were reading all of that okay uh oh this was just part of this was part of a browser client uh, and yeah, here's just showing you know some of the things that we're, we've delivered in this preview. Um, yeah, rounding out some of the the uh, modeling 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 side of things. Oh, and this is the preview preview uh, feedback button that Jake was just talking about. In the top right corner, you have this area that shows that it's a preview, um, and then there's a little horn icon. That's where you give feedback. We'd love to hear you know your thoughts. And then also there's a there's a nice learning uh, onboarding kind of a, a experience when you first get in. Um, you know if you're if you know how to model, that's awesome. Uh, go straight into it. If you're new to Fusion and you know want to learn a bit how things work, um, there's a there's a little getting started panel for you. All right, uh, I'm gonna go into general updates. So. Um, Nonetheless, these are still very important, and we're also very proud of some of these things. And I think that will it'll also be really helpful for you guys um, as you're you know, making changes to your designs and uh, machining them and getting them getting them made. So one of the things that we've been really focused on in the in the past couple updates is making sure that our uh, updates are reliable and, and that um, you know quality reliability has been a top top focus for us. Now in Fusion 360, you can cache uh, your designs and projects um, for offline use. So if you're on kind of um, uh, spotty internet, or if your internet cuts off, or you're on the road, or if you know if we're experiencing something weird, um, you still have access to everything that you've cached that you selectively cached. Um, so in, in this first GIF on the on the left here, this is showing you right clicking and you can cache a project or you can crash, cache a specific design or you can cache a number uh, of, of designs. Um, and then once you've cached it, there's an activity uh, indication in the job status. Uh, um, and you know we're, you can you can monitor that while it's caching. Sometimes it goes pretty quick so you it just it just happens. It'll, you'll probably miss it. Um, but if you you know if you want to actually monitor how much of it is being cached, that's where you can see it. Um, and then also, uh, you we, you will need to know what has been cached and what hasn't. And instead of going online and offline to see that, uh, there's a little gear icon that you can uh, go to and see exactly what you've cached. So designs that are cached are active, and uh, designs that are not cached will be grayed out. Um, so that's a, a nice way to see that. The, what you cached it. This is super great and really helpful um, added uh, functionality inside of Fusion. I'm just thinking of a real world experience where we would do uh, set up trainings and sometimes the places we go to don't really have a great connection but we still have to go through and train teams. Uh, in the past we'd have to download all the parts ahead of time so that they're local to that computer and cached. Now it's great that we're able to select them exactly the parts we want to have them cached locally uh, directly uh, by hitting this function, so it's really helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one thing to point out is that this the cache is a one-time cache only, right? So what this means is that it's not syncing to any changes. It's just caching what you've cached at that moment that you've cached. <laughs> How many times did I just say cache? Um, but so yeah, that's a good thing that just to keep in mind. You know, if you're making changes to a design and you want to get the latest, just recache it. Um, but it's not it's not constantly syncing. It's like a it's just caching when you're doing it. All right. Um, with that, let's go into sketching. We've got some cool stuff in sketching. Jake. Okay. I'm gonna take over. So I was involved in in implementing some of these. So um, I'm gonna introduce what we did in sketching and modeling for this update. Um, 
So sketching, we've we've recently kind of increased our investment in sketching. You know, we, we're hearing a lot about you know feature enhancements and behavior improvements that people want, and you know we're hearing that feedback loud and clear. We've like a few months ago, we really started increasing our in investment in sketching, and so we're starting to see some of the fruits of that in this update. So in this update and over the next few updates, we should be seeing some really nice goodies coming in Sketch. Cool. Um, so for this August update, we had two kind of big enhancements. The first of which was art slots. Uh, so in previous versions of Fusion, we just had linear slots available in the kind of slot drop down. We've added kind of a nice shortcut to creating art slots. Right? You could do this before by chaining a bunch of arcs together, but this is just a quick and easy way to create a geometry that you want to add on a frequent basis. Um, so the way you create them is similar to how you create general arcs. Right? We have the three-point arc option or center point arc. And then you add that fourth click to define the width of the slot. Yeah, this is a really nice shortcut that's, that's available now um, after that August update. Very other, awesome. Yeah. The other big thing in sketching was tangent dimensions. I know this is a huge one and, and lots of people have been waiting for this. Um, this took a while to develop. It took us some time to like iron out the issues and, and get the behaviors right and get the UI right. Um, so today, or previously, we, you know, when you dimension from an arc or a circle, it was always dimensioning from the center of that. And that's obviously the most common use case. But there are cases where you want to dimension from the edge, right? So, for example, you have a hole that has some clearance from the edge of the part, and you want to define that clearance. Um, there's many cases where you want to dimension from the, the edge rather than from the center. So the way this works is in the dimensioning tool. Uh, when you right-click, you can see it here. There's an option now to switch from picking the center of an arc or a circle to picking the tangent. Um, once you're in that Sweet. mode, you yeah, as you hover over circles and arcs, you'll see the kind of preview of where that tangent's going to be created. Um, it's a nice thing about this as well. I don't think this video shows it, but if you have a circle, um, this typically is going to be two solutions, right? This is going to be the nearest tangent side or the furthest. Mm -hmm. And depending on where you click on the circle, that's going to pick the side. Um, so in this, the, the 20 mil dimension there, if you were to hover the mouse kind of nearer to the bottom of that circle, you would actually dimension from the, the bottom side of the circle. Right. Than the or the side. top side of this. this exactly, arc, right? yeah, or that arc, yeah. So there's multiple solutions. It's based on where you click on the circle of the arc. Uh, yeah, so that's it for Sketch this update. More stuff coming in the future updates. Really looking forward to that. Uh, we're getting into modeling next. Yeah, okay. So. Again, modeling is with increased investment, and I think over the next few updates, we're going to see some, some nice enhancements to the core modeling tools. Um, for this update, we had two big enhancements as well. So the first was for lofting. Um, so this is really affecting the patch loft command. Um, until this update, you were able to define continuity settings on the profiles. Right? So you had a profile, and you wanted the, the loft to come off tangent or G2 to that profile. Um, you could do that. But you couldn't control that same thing on the rails. So it, was, it, it wasn't possible to get that kind of smooth connection at the rails of the lot. So this is really useful when you're kind of building up shapes with patch surfaces or building blend surfaces. Um, really, that kind of limitation made it difficult to use the lot tool for that previously. And this is like a, seems like a simple thing, but it took a lot of, lot of work to kind of get this in. You know, was, we had to restructure some of the loft command to get this in, but we knew it was so important and we're really happy to finally get this in. So now, um, if you have a patch lock like this, you can define the continuity on all four sides of it, which is really nice. Get a nice smooth transition. Very good. Awesome. I remember seeing that had a lot of votes in the idea station, so it's awesome to see it implement it. Yeah, it's a big thing, especially people coming from, um, you know, surfacing packages like, a, like uh, Alias. Um, you know, they kind of, you know, this is a, a fundamental requirement, and, and you know, we're really glad to finally get this into Fusion. Um, the second big thing was on Sweep. Okay, so we added, I think it was last year, we added the ability to do a sweep with a guide rail. Um, but one aspect of that was that the guide rail was more kind of like guiding the sweep rather than acting like a true kind of two-rail sweep. So if you're, if you're familiar with, with other software that has something like a two-rail sweep or a bi-rail surface, um, you can do something like this. You can provide a profile and two rails, and you can kind of use those rails to um, define how the, the sweep flows and the extents of those. Our initial guide rail sweep didn't really allow you to, to control the full extent of the sweep. What it would do is it would cut off at the, uh, um, depending on the direction of the path, it would kind of cut off perpendicular to that path. Mm. Um, so we added this extent option that by default does the same thing as it previously did. So you can see in this sweep, it's kind of cut off 
before the end of the path because of that, that tangent direction. Um, the change in that extent to full extent will extend to both, it, both sides. So both of those rails kind of act um, equally on the surface. And that gives you a lot more control over the surface, gives you more predictable results, and you can define where the sweep starts and ends on, on both sides. Um, awesome. So again, a really nice uh, improvement to the sweep that makes the sweep tool a lot more powerful. Um, yeah, so that was it for this update. Um, over the next month or so, I think there's going to be more updates that can add more to sweep and um, some stuff in the patch tool as well. So like, yeah, more details on that coming soon. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Cool. So with that, I think I'll hand back to Kachin. Cool. All about 2D drawings. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. That was, that was great to see that. So there is a, there's a, been some added um, things that we're doing on these webinars where we have uh, the teams who, who show up are... are uh, our users that we see each week, where Al is, uh, he, he would take a couple minutes at the end of the webinar, we would stop recording, and then Al would show us some of the updates, where hmm. we're able to, uh, to work with our team here to get some of those updates that the team's working on and keep you guys posted on what's new. And uh, we'd like to do that at the end of some of the webinars, so we'll keep that going in the future. Wonderful, yeah. Okay, cool, sweet. Uh, I'll go quickly into uh, some of these things here. 2D drawings. So with with this update, we also had a aside from like bend tables and bend IDs, we also made some really nice improvements in 2D drawings. Um, here is showing dimension group stretch. So before it was pretty tedious to to stretch um, the the dimensions uh, if you're selecting multiple of them. Now this is showing picking one by one, but you can also now window select a group of them and stretch them to a new location. Um, so uh, just an another um, making your life easier type of, a, a, of, a, of an improvement here for, for 2D drawings. Um, we've also added break lines or line break, dimension break. Uh, so what you, if, I don't know if you caught that. This is just going to keep going uh, re on repeat. Uh, when you have intersecting dimension lines like this one, previously that's, you just have to deal with that. But now you can right-click on the dimension that's intersecting and say add dimension break and you'll have a nice clean um, you know break in that line just making your drawings look cleaner and uh, and, and just more nicer in general um, yeah okay yep and then and then also uh, you know if you make changes to your design and go back to 2d drawings you'll notice that you know that you get a little exclamation mark and uh, saying that you know that dimension is out of date um, now you can reassociate by simply dragging uh, the dimension and that will update that's awesome all right so let's get into some cam improvements here um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think there were a lot in this one, but uh, I think these are still really nice and worth mentioning. I know, Wayne, I think you can also speak to some of this. Um, but with, uh, with Cam here, let me just go to the next slide. Uh, we've made some really nice turning, turning improvements. Uh, so more specifically, turning confinement. And um, so what, what this is about is that previously you had very little control over the front and back confinements um, since they were based off of a fixed origin point and had to uh, had to be set for that part. But um, we've heard lots of feedback, um, gotten some really nice uh, suggestions on the forum. I think Loney, Loney Caddy uh, made this suggestion um, that when, wherever you are, whenever you are turning a part, um, you should be able to specify the stock front, stock back, model front, model back, chuck front, um, and with the, the new reference origin if needed. Um, so we made that happen, and you now can do that uh, and select where you want um, for that origin to be. It's great added flexibility on being able to control a little bit more uh, can precisely on where exactly you want the tool to go uh, to yeah. stay with you're doing a profile or grooving. Um, this is also one that had... Uh, a high vote in our the idea station that was started by Lonnie Caddy, and that was definitely one we agree with, and it's it's awesome to see this implemented as well. Yes, indeed. Um, we've also introduced some uh, an, some in tutorials, more specific, more specifically an eleven part series uh, on turning. Um, 
So, and this is uh, this is uh, this is made by Mike Matera. Um, he's done some really nice tutorials. You know, he he does our tool tips. So, shout out to Mike for doing for making this happen. Um, and yeah, just uh, it, if you want to learn more or just use it as a as a reference, um, really nice set of of content here in our in our learning site. So, yeah, be sure to check it out. Mike rocks. Yeah, he worked with our team, Tim Paul, as well as the other elite team to be able to get put those together. Excuse me, to put those together. And this is something yeah. that's also been asked for for quite some time as content on being able to do uh, subspindle and how to do the handoff for subspindle machining. Awesome, awesome. Uh, and so yeah, that wraps up essentially the the what's new and what we've delivered this uh, this past couple couple days ago. Uh, as in the update. Um, again, really, really excited that this is out to you guys. Um, be sure to be sure to check out these features. Any of them that that interest you, um, give us any feedback. Uh, we're always here to to listen and and uh, and discuss any th any thoughts with you. Um, and yeah. I think that's that's about it for us. Oh, Wayne, awesome. you want to take it over? Sure. Yeah. I, um, I'd be um, happy to show off some a little bit of the uh, sheet metal too. Uh, so I'm going to make myself presenter, but guys, thank you so much uh, for coming on to uh, to show us what's going on inside of Fusion, uh, the updates that we've had on the 8th. Um, is there anybody out there who may have any questions directly for Kaching or Jake? Uh, there's anything that's uh, that's kind of sticking in your mind you'd like to ask them uh, while the, while we have them here? Uh, please feel free uh, enter that into our our, uh, our chat log or our questions panel. And, uh, and we'll get some answers while these guys are here. So, again, guys, thank you for so much for coming on and uh, give us an update on what's new inside of Fusion. Um, so yeah, you guys no should, yeah, thanks. Pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having us, man. You guys rock. So you guys could be, should be able to see my screen. I'm going to bring up Fusion real quick. And uh, I'm going to kind of walk through really quick. I, ha I had an inspiration. I was learning and working with uh, Sheet Metal um, on a part that I saw inside of Instructables which is a kind of like a simple base that you would probably put an iPad on in this case. Um, and I kind of got inspired by that little piece. So I wanted to make a little sheet metal um, holder for my iPhone. So I'm going to go into real quick into sheet metal. And I'm going to walk through really quickly and easily how I was able to make uh, that component. So I'm going to make a new component here. And what's important is to select the right rules and work with those rules. You can put in your K factor for and your bends, uh, thickness, bend conditions. So you can you have freedom here to be able to do that at the new component. You can also set up your rules. So it's really important to make sure that you're working with the right rules for your uh, sheet metal environment. So I'm going to call this one iPhone stand. And of course, you, if you're working on a droid phone, you can do that, of course. So I'm going to expand down here and I'm going to work in this plane, this XY plane. And I'm going to start to draw in here. So I'm going to create a sketch. Uh, I'm going to make, uh, I want this thing to be, um, let's say, three inches tall. I, just the, the basis idea, the basic idea of how tall I'd want it. Let's say we make it three. And I'm going to turn this into a center line. So let me expand this over. I'm going to highlight the line. I'm going to hit X, and it turns it into a center line really quickly. I'm just going to sketch in, uh, right click, drag down, right? If I drag down twice, I get a line. So it's gesture control, you can remember. So I'm going to start to draw this little parallelogram here. And so I want to be able to have this at the midpoint. So I'm going to hold control and snap there. And I want to have a midpoint constraint. The same thing here, midpoint constraint. So I'm just kind of sketching in here and, and adding in some symmetry there. So on this one, I'm going to put a dimension on the bottom here. I'm going to make this three inches wide, and then up here I'm going to make this one an inch and a half. So now, um, oops, now I'm going to add some horizontal on the bottom here. So I'm just going to select that bottom part, and I'm going to make it horizontally constrained. So now we're constrained. I can stop that sketch. So I can also do that in the model workspace too, and, and simply sketch. But while I'm in the sheet metal environment, I can make this into a flange, and I want this to be the base flange. It's going to use the rules into what I set up initially, and it makes this into a base flange. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, and from here, what I'd like to do is I'm going to kind of imagine uh, what this part's going to look like. Let me close out of that initial sketch real quick. So I'm kind of I'm going to imagine um, if I want to have this thing sort of have a 
uh, stand in the back here. I'm going to go into that plane, the YZ plane, and start a new sketch there. And I kind of want this thing to, oops, I didn't save my flange. I guess I didn't. I was still in sketch. Sorry, guys. Let me go back into that sketch. I'm going to turn that into a flange. There we go. Ah, that's what I did. Okay, I'm going to take this, make it into a flange, and say, okay, there we go. Okay, and so while I'm working in this sketch, I'm kind of imagining, uh, turn off my body. Interesting. There's my rule, there's my origin. Let me start a new sketch here and delete this. So on this plane, I want to I want to be able to draw. I want to have a, this kind of sit back like this. So I'm going to draw a line and kind of that represents the way I want that sort of base to sit. And then I want to be able to have like a little holder here. So I'm going to start another line and kind of draw where I want to be able to have like a little ledge for the iPhone to sit. And then if I want to create those as a flange, I can simply go in here and say I want this and imagine what that would look like coming off of there. So really quickly and easy, I'm able to make that a flange. And I'll do the same thing here. I think I have an extra line in there. So let me edit that sketch real quick and get rid of that little extra line. There we go. And now I'm, I'm going to use this to sit the iPhone on. So I'm going to make a flange out of that. And you saw this in the um, in the uh, pa the presentation that uh, let me move this down a little bit. In the presentation that uh, Kaching was showing. Edit the sketch. Here we go. I want to make sure it's going to aim and be on that same plane. Why won't it let me move it? Should be able to move this around. Move this one around. Don't let me grab a hold of it. I'll just resketch it again. But I want to make sure it's aiming at that edge. It's kind of strange. I think I have that on the other sketch there. That's what it was. I was doubling them up. Here we go. So I'm able to quickly and easily make a flange from there to there. And I can see I have this little tray, little sheet metal tray that I'm able to put on and, and uh, kind of move it around. So I left those kind of free to move so I can get a good idea of what I want that to look like. So it gives you that freedom of being able to design and have an idea of what kind of uh, shapes that you're making inside of sheet metal. And so now it looks pretty good. I think I'm going to be able to make that. Now, if I put my iPhone on there and I want to plug it in, I'm kind of missing a little bit of a hole there for the cord to go in. So if I wanted to add that, I want to be able to go up and uh, and, and create uh, some slots on there. So I'm going to go into modify. I'm going to unfold it. I'm going to choose where I want to be able to have that unfolded to. And now I'm able to start sketching on this plane. So I want to be able to put a sketch right on here. Oops, I want to do a new sketch. Sorry, guys. Make a new sketch. And I'm going to add a slot feature, but I want that to be on a center line. So I'm going to add a center line right on here. Make that the center. I'm going to hit the X key. That becomes a center line. And now I want to be able to pull up a slot. Now a quick um, tip that we did last week is if we hit the S key, we could do a search for certain functions. So if I search for slot, you'll see that new three arc, three point arc slot as well. Uh, we have the center to center slot. And I also added this to my, my sketch toolbox. So I can easily call up my sketch, my sketch toolbox and start to be able to add that slot. I'll make this uh, 3 8. So I'm able to add those features really quickly, quickly to this sketch. And I want to add some of those arc slots as well. So again, I'm going to hit the S. I added it to my, my toolbox here. And I could just start a arc sketch right in here like that. So I'll make that, uh, again, 3 8. And the cool thing is I'm able to dimension. I'm just going to show you. I'm not going to really tie it down too much, but I'm able to add a dimension in here. And again, as Kaching was showing that if we want to snap, and Jake was showing, if we want to snap to this, it'll snap right to the center of the arc. But now we have this option. So if I go and start the dimension, and if I right click, I'm able to now snap to the tangent, and it snaps to the tangent of that arc. So it's a really nice functionality to be able to control off the edges or shall I say the tangent edges to a dimension. So I'm going to mirror this as well. So I'm going to select that. You don't have to do it first, but I'm going to right click. Um, actually on here, I'm going to hit the S key because I had put the mirror command on my sketch toolbox as well after searching it. And I can mirror around that center line. Um, oops, let me disconnect that center line there. There we go. Select that mirror line and I'm able to mirror that feature. 
So now I can pull those things through while I'm still in the sheet metal environment. I can go and modify. I can also create an extrude while I'm right here in the sketch and extrude down these faces here or these uh, regions. So now I have some cutouts. It's kind of like what I want it to look like. I want to have some area where I can have that uh, that cord go. So if I refold the faces, it now takes those features with it. And now this is sort of what I get, a neat little tray that I can put the iPhone on. Again, I can always go back to the sketch, kind of stretch it around. I didn't really nail anything down yet, but I'm kind of free and able to move these things around and get a, a real preview of what's going on. I can even change those slots. So I get some little sharp edges on here. So I want to move them around. So if I go into that sketch, let's go and say, uh, um, I want to be able to have that sort of go right into here. I get a live preview right in here, what that's going to look like after it's folded. So I can control where those slots are on the 2D sketch. And I can also see what's going to happen after it's folded right there. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to hide that off. Now let's say I want to make a bunch of these for Al and for Adam and for CJ. Uh, and I want to come out to uh, Pier 9 to be able to run the OMAX. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up where I can run it inside of the uh, CAM environment. So before I do that, let me save it real quick. So I'm going to save it to my project. I'm going to call it uh, for iPhone Stand. Really simple design easy to do. And now what I want to do is be able to run it in cam, I'm going to have to make a, a, a flat pattern. So I'm going to go create a flat pattern. This is going to be my stationary face. Okay. And I get a flat pattern. Now I don't have to work with the flat pattern here. I can say exit flat. And what it did, it saved in design the flat pattern that I'm able to work with in, in a, each of the different workspaces. So I'm going to go into the cam workspace. I'm going to expand down and I can see I can enable that flat pattern. So now if I want to work, I can reorient this. I can uh oh. Are <laughs> you guys still with me? So I can reorient it. Uh, no worries. So I can reorient it into the position that I want to see it in CAM, and now I can simply start to do a setup. So I'm going to set this up. Uh, we're going to make it on a sheet uh, for uh, the, the sheets that I was working with, I can make it like 36 by 36, but I'm going to put this, while I'm here, I'm going to make a box, box box point right there in the corner. I can always shift this around if I'm going to do it from the front to the back. I probably would do it from this corner here, and I would flip the X around like that or something like that. Uh, I could do it this way as well. So we could pick a corner really easily, and now what I want to do is I want to have this part set up as if I'm going to do it on a sheet. So I'm going to go into my stock. I'm going to do, let's say, a fixed size box, and I'm going to do 36 inches, oops, 36. Uh, this is going to be offset from the Z0, and I'm going to have, let's say, a half inch distance there. And my depth is also going to be, let's say, 36. I have a sheet, 36. I'm going to make this from the Y negative, and we'll go also a half inch from that corner. All right, let me make it Y positive. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm setting up, I'm mimicking the sheet we have in uh, I think this is 16 thick, I think I did. Okay, and I'm able to set that from the center or from the top position of the Z. So quickly I'm able to mimic the sheet that we're going to be working on in my setup. And let's say we want to go and cut this out. So I'm going to go up to cutting, a 2D profile. Okay, I'm going to select the tool. Uh, we're going to do this on the water jet. So let me let me select that tool out of here, wherever my tool, there is my tool library. Let me bring it up here, guys. So if we're going to work on, let's say, a plasma cutter or the OMAX, I can go and get the water jet, let's say a one millimeter water jet tool. Okay, and I can just set, select my geometry. I'll select that right off this plane here. Okay, and you can set your heights. You have your, your passes, your kerf distance and all that. You can set up easily. I'm going to say OK. Now we have the toolpath that we can use to cut that out. Okay, we can simulate it. So if I'm going to go up and simulate, turn on my stock, I can see what it's going to look like as it cuts it out of the sheet. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> I don't think I select my profile, right? There we go. Make sure I have my heights and my depth set. So I selected something wrong, but that's the idea, being able to run it that way. Let's see. Got my chain selected, got my loops, should go around the part. 
my heights, make sure I'm on the bottom. The retract height looks good. It's always good when you get on these webinars and you go to set these things up. Oh, did I grab the bottom? Okay, and I should be able to cut out all those holes. I can also choose the profiles inside of here as well. And just on, on that note, you can select a face and say select everything on that face. Awesome. Uh, that should be out in milling soon too. So my contour, my chain, will select everything on that face. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Al. So it looks like I'm on the other direction, so I might want to change the direction there. Same select plane. So you, uh, you did. Um, you've got a checkbox saying you want to start. It, you want to cut the on the inside. You should be on the outside. So go on the side. Thank you, sir. Outside. Awesome. Thanks, Al. All right. So now I want to make that. I could take a look again. I can simulate. Highlight this again. There it is. Calculated. Simulate. And we can see what that's going to look like on the sheet. Cutting it out. And now if we wanted to make a sheet full of these, we can do that as well. We just do a, a pattern, and now we can make them on a sheet so we can make them for everybody. So just select that, go up the pattern. I can say the direction. One awesome thing I love about the flexibility is that I can actually select the direction right off the, the model that we're working on. And I can flip that direction. I can say I want to make this uh, you know, 3 inches. I'm actually going to make it 3.25. And then we can make uh, you know 12 of them in that pattern, whatever fits on your sheet. We can also go the additional direction. We can go in here and select that edge. And we can also go down here and say, I want to make that uh, you know, eight inches. Actually, we'll make it seven, something like that. Or maybe even six and a half. And then we could do eight of those, or probably six of those. We could probably get out of 36 inches. Something like that, we will do five. But the idea is that you're able to get in here really quickly from one part we designed up in sheet metal. We're able to bend it, get those bends exactly as we want them. Uh, I didn't go in and lock down any dimensions. I left it free, but still I'm able to go in here in a few minutes and be able to set up a toolpath, and I can pattern them to run on the machine. So now if we want to get those out, I just go up to post process. Okay, let me bring up my post process box here. And uh, we can run, we have the, you can switch this over to cutting. And then you could find a lot of those posts that we work with. These are the ones that come with Fusion. If you don't see your post here, you can always go up into our post library and do a search. When that pops up, you'll see that we have a lot more posts that are in our library to work with. So if I'm going to post out for the OMAX, go up to post process, save it. I'll overwrite what I did before. And now it pops up. I'm able to send some code. Let's let this update. There we go. So now we can run and the so this, this is actually a good thing to point out here. This this code, it doesn't look like G code, and that's one of the powers of the post engine. We're posting out a, a native OMAX file in this case. That's a huge testament to our, our um, developers and uh, and the team over there, uh, especially in um, uh, the team who's working with the post is uh, in our, again, our elite users and our uh, Autodesk team uh, for working on these and updating them and getting posts that we can all use. Awesome. So anyway, uh, we're at the top of the hour. I just wanted to show you how quick and easy it was to be able to make a sheet metal part. Uh, something, you know, simple in this case, but you can imagine some of the pretty amazing designs and things that you can make uh, simply by grabbing an edge and making a flange and pulling that off. I mean, it's really flexible, really easy to use. And uh, in the end, you get a pattern that you can actually run on your machines and make cheap metal parts like this. So, Wayne, as usual, and you mentioned it during the webinar, we've got a neat little tip and trick coming up of what's coming. Um, CJ is going to show some neat stuff with drilling. So when you finish the recording, we can, we can move over, and CJ will spend five minutes and show you uh, some neat stuff for selecting holes. Awesome, Al. Awesome. So uh, you guys out there, we have like, I think we're right on the top of the hour. If there's any last minute questions you might have, please feel free to ask. You can always get in touch with us anytime. Um, you can check our forums, uh, a great place to find help and also look for uh, resources when it comes to post and such, but always check our forums, a great place that you'll see all of our 
um, elite users as well as developers and uh, an Autodesk team there as well. Okay, so with that, guys, um, Kaching, Jake, thank you so much for joining us and showing us what was new this week in Fusion. Uh, sheet metals. Yeah, big point. yeah, absolutely. Thanks again, guys. Cool. Yeah. And uh, and so um, these are the just major updates, and we and we love uh, the, how how flexible and how quickly uh, Fusion is is being updated. The, uh, it's just amazing, blows my mind. So guys, uh, please tune in next week. We're going to be back. We're going to start getting into more of the tool library. We're going to start to talk uh, with Matt Nichols when he does a deep dive into the API programming, uh, and we have a lot more up and coming. So join in each week. Again, Wednesdays we do our our fast track to get help you get started when you're new. Uh, and our Fridays are more advanced than what's going on. And uh, and as Al had mentioned, we're going to show you a little bit of more of what's to come and uh, exciting updates that are happening in the future. So with that, I'm going to stop recording right about now, and I'm going to hand it over to Al.